Hey everybody, Jay at Express Screen, uh, getting ready to go live in just a few minutes. We've got a, a production job that we're working on. Um, it's going to be, uh, well I'll explain in a minute. We're going to let a few more people jump on here first. and uh, So just hang in there and we'll be ready to go here in just a minute. So, uh, this is the print on our back, and we're going to be putting some names on there. So, I'll go ahead and take you over to our press so you can, our uh, heat press, so you can see what we're doing with uh, these. So, I've got some names over here. Uh, I've got a list of different people and what they ordered. Uh, this shirt's a medium long sleeve. So, once I've got that. So once I've got that all settled, throw it on, and now I know which one of my transfers is the one that I'm looking for to uh, put on here. So now that I've got that info, just grab whichever name corresponds to that. I got H. Williams here. I'm going to center this. And I actually sometimes, especially with the longer ones to help me center it, I'll give myself a little middle crease right at the top where I'm not going to really be bothering my uh, image at all but it's just a little tiny marker to make sure that I've got it in the middle you can kind of see where that crease is right there and once I've got that set it up make sure it's straight on there And then once I've got that straight, just worry about that. To the image here, don't worry about it. There you go. All right, got that right where I want it. Sleeves right there. Pull it up a little bit further. further, further. It's, I know, the whole thing. Slide it up. There you Slide go. that back just slightly just to make sure I'm not on the edge there. And I'm going to go ahead and print this. And we've got it set to 325 for 9 seconds. Because we're working with polyester shirts, uh, we don't want to leave it under there for too long. And then I'm just going to peel this back. And there we go, we got a nice transfer for our first one. We're going to keep moving here. You're going to see some uh, good production today. Ted's uh, working on printing some of these other shirts right now. And then we're going to keep the ball rolling. I'll be doing the transfers. Ted's going to be doing all the prints. I'm going to move this one back over because we do have a front print that goes with this as well.
So as Woody's probably already explained. What we're doing today, and we've already done a demo shirt, to kind of give you an idea. So we've got these night dry fits, putting an image on the front, putting an image on the back, and then we're also doing a name drop on it. Um, so here we've got the image on the front, the image on the back, and then the name drop. Now, what we've done for the name is uh, we've went ahead and printed transfers for uh, the names, and we actually got one more sheet of transfers to print and uh, as soon as we get done uh, well you're going to get to see the whole process as we're going through so here's the transfers we already printed off and we're also going to burn a screen to show you the transfers as well so if you have any questions let us know would you do me a favor and uh, take your phone and put it on live so we can see if people have questions and uh, let yeah. us know give us a thumbs up let us know you're there if you have any questions We'll answer them as we go along. Does my heart good. Look at there. We've got the boss over there slaving away. So what he's doing, what Ted's doing right now, is uh, Ted's is printing all the backs on the shirts that we have name drops for. And... Uh, and he, uh, he, as soon as he gets done with that, him and Woody are conjuncting with each other for the name so they can come over here and do the uh, name drop on the heat press. Lord Goodshot says, hi, Ted. Hello, Lord. Ted says, hey, Lord. So the... Uh, the uh, mesh that we're using is a 120 mesh. Um, ink that we're using, Union. I'm trying to remember what, uh, I think we're using a, a high poly. Let me take a look right quick. Premium poly white by Union Ink. Has a little funny smell to it. Uh, it's a great poly, great low temp, cure. Uh, white ink. Uh, you can see we're running through the dryer there. They're going through the dryer at about 335, 340. Uh, they are not getting over 350. Uh, and these are night dry fits. You got to pay a little bit of attention to them. You don't want them to get them too hot, definitely. And you can take a look at this screen right here that we've got set up. Um, that's where we did our transfer. We left the screen set up there. And once we get done with the transfers, we're just putting transfer powder on them, running them through the dryer, uh, run them through at about uh, 230, 240 degrees. And then we're putting, a, or we're of course, putting the dust on them and then running them through. And then we're bringing them over and, uh, and Woody's cutting them out and lining them up and putting them on the shirts. Jared says he's glad he's still in the video. That's a good point. We so Jared's with us today as well, right here. So you can ask him any question you want. And Woody is over here pressing some more. In case you missed what he said earlier, we're pressing 325? 325 for about nine seconds. For about nine seconds. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, let me. Some people who are watching may not know how our uh, how our technique works, and so our mesh is already coated. Uh, the mesh is on this side, and there's a pet coating that's on the outside. So this is solid; you can't print through it. Okay, and so what we do is we take our mesh and we stretch it. On a frame. Now, these are the Reso Quick frames. You do not have to use these frames. We we use them just because they're so doggone quick. But you can use Newman roller frames. Uh, you can use uh, static, uh, uh, conventional aluminum frames. Uh, any way that you can stretch those. These take about three minutes to stretch. If you're really quick, about two and a half minutes. I've got one up on our thermal screen maker right here. And what happens is there's a thermal print head thermal 18 inch thermal print head and it burns it at 1200 dpi resolution and so all i have to do is load it into the exposure unit and i go straight from my computer to burn it on the screen. Now this is not to be confused with CTS or computer screen. It's even better than that because we don't use any emulsion. We have no dark room. Uh, don't use any chemicals in the process. And so, uh, and the process is a whole lot shorter. It takes about 90 seconds for me to burn a screen. Um, this is going to be our our final name drop screen. And I'm going out of Corel Draw. You can use Illustrator. You can use a uh, Adobe Acrobat. And I am simply going to click print, go to my preferences, choose my frame size. And here, if I had half tones, I could choose that, but this is all solid work. So choose green touch, click OK, apply. And let me double check and make sure I've got my right size of frame here. I do. and click print and it's going to send data to the qs and it'll take about 20 seconds to do that when it's done i'll hear a little beep i'll click the start button and when i click the start button there we go now we're going to burn a screen i'll show you guys that process so this is us burning a screen Again, what's happening here is so it's an 18 inch wide thermal head. And that, that is to say, it's a, equivalent to a, a very high end fax machine or a receipt printer. So it's using heat to put a hole in the screen wherever we want ink to go through. It does it with a very, very fine uh, detail. Lot to, it's easier to get high half tone details using this process than it is to making a traditional screen. And a lot of people ask, okay, when you're done with this, you have to wash it out. No, we don't have to wash it out. All we have to do is carry it straight over to the press and start printing with it. That's how simple this process is. So you can probably see in the screen right there, those letters are being burned out of the screen. And the burning process takes anywhere, depending on the size of the screen you have, from about 90 seconds to about two and a half minutes. Uh, these are the 21 by 23 frames they'll have an image area of about 16 by 18 inches. Now we have three different mesh counts. So we have a 70 and a 120 and a 200. Now our mesh counts work differently than conventional printing. Our 70 mesh will be equivalent to a conventional 110 to a 135. Our 120 mesh is gonna be roughly equivalent to a 150 to a 235. And then our 200 mesh, 255 to 305. We mostly do process and simulated process printing with it. And you can look here and see, the screen is completely burned. So all we do is lift that up and take it out and carry it directly over to the press and start printing with it. So 
well, let's see what uh, what Woody's doing over here. Just lining up my prints, and uh, for this job, we had a lot of different names and different types of shirts. So I've got this sheet. I'm just going down when I get a shirt, making sure I got the uh, right shirt and right name for the right person or the right type of shirt we've got long sleeve we've got short sleeve uh large medium small so so you're saying this takes a bit of organization to not screw up right yeah yeah, yeah i'd say so which isn't normally my strong suit but you know we're in production so i'm getting i'm getting there and we got our, our fearless leader ted helping guide us on, on our path today and, and keeping us out of trouble trying to at least So we're gonna watch Ted print here for just a minute. And so he's uh he's gonna play around with the shirt now that I'm here. And I done put him under pressure. He don't like being nice. on video. <laughs> While he's loading it up. Let me give you a closer look here. So this is what our transfer screen looks like. Okay, and then uh, these are probably not the same one. Now, these are not the same ones, but this is what the transfer paper looks like. So all it is is just a, a print uh, that we've done. And we've done it in reverse so we can... Uh, so, of course, when it transfers off, it'll be a positive. It'll be the right direction. All right, Ted's got loaded up, and he's, he's spinning, and he's flashing. So... He is, uh, he's used to rotating to the flash on the left, so we've kind of thrown him off today, making him spin it to the right. Now watch him for just a second. This is my second pass, so I'm going to take this uh, flash jar away so I don't burn anything up. So what Ted's doing is he's pulling his shirt off. I do the same thing. That way, once he starts pulling off the shirt, uh, he is able to throw it on the dryer he's not having to wait for another shirt at that point so all right let's get back up here see what Woody's got going on he's marking off his Hello. lid Nobody with any questions yet that I can see. Jared couldn't be with us today because he's uh, he's slumming it and uh, headed down to the beach to apparently do some fishing. Let's get back to the what kind of shirts we're using here. So these being uh, dry fit uh, poly shirts, they can't stand a lot of heat at all. So you have to be very careful with them. You cannot use these things like you're using uh, like you're using cotton shirts. Um, therefore, is the reason that we're doing the. Uh, 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 poly ink. You can get a lot lower cure rate or cure temperature with your uh, with your poly ink, as opposed to using a, uh, an ultra soft or something like that. Woody's like Santa Claus over here, making his list and checking it twice. Yeah, I don't wanna don't wanna put the name on the wrong shirt. Yeah, yeah. 
dry fits are a little pricey so now normally I'll do uh, like I was saying earlier I'll do a little crease in the middle to uh, make sure I've got it right four letters though I, I you can eyeball that pretty easily as long as you know where the center of your image is which we do so four letters I can do that pretty easily on my own not what I wanted to do exactly didn't put down my Teflon sheet there it came out fine but always want to put down that Teflon sheet that one's on me all right heading back over here so Ted's got most of the backs done already and I want to say one thing you need to remember is being able to how to line up your shirt uh, or line up your image as well as your shirt a lot of times, and I didn't do it today, I'll put it up in the bottom, in the center, so I know I'm exactly centered where I, where I need to be at uh, on the press. Um, and I forgot, I did, it's a good thing. I, I had not centered this one up yet, so I need to make my adjustments. Thought I'd already come over here and done it. Now I'm going to move my, spin it around here. Alright. So luckily in this image, in the middle of that for sight, there, there's a crest. And that crest, of course I can't see nothing, that crest represents the center of my image area. So all I need to do, all contact sticking. Well, let me peel it off. Let's get it out of the way for a minute. Okay. So I'm lining that crest up with my center line. And I've drawn a center line down the middle of the platen right here, so I know my crest lines up exactly with it, top and bottom. Good to go. Now, you probably, some of you have seen me do this before. This is my off contact. And what I do, is I tape them to the back of the screen. Now, with here's the thing with this white ink printing, and Jared and I have went over this a lot over the past few weeks. You cannot print flat, especially with black ink, especially with sticky poly ink. You have to raise your screen above the shirt above the garment. Uh, how far? Uh, it depends on how tight your screen is. Here we're using the retentionables and they're very very tight. So I'm printing 3 sixteenths or just above, maybe even a quarter of an inch above the shirt. And uh, to, I use the bottom off contact right here to get my off contact, but there's no off contact at the top on this press, so I just take one of the old wooden frames, which is about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, I tape that to the top of it. So before I let Ted jump into production, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a t-shirt. And this is a sample shirt. And this is to make sure that my image is where I want it at. So you always need to test. And you know what? Actually, let me use a uh, Pellon instead of a t-shirt. And I can use my ruler to check and make sure it's level. So, if I'm not straight and I'm not level, I can make my adjustments. Now, second thing is 
Always make sure you're clearing your image area out. If you don't clear your image area out and you go over to the flash, you're going to get a texture and it's not going to be very nice. And let me check the square. Make sure I'm where I want to be at. And I am level. And I want to make sure I'm right to left equal. I've got about one, two, three, just under four inches, three and a half, three and three quarter. And the same thing I got on this side. And then the last thing I want to do is measure down how far my image is so I know where to put my shirt at. And we're on the front, so we're going to go about two inches off of the collar. So that's going to wind up being one, two, down about right here. The top of the collar is going to be about right here. So I need to let Ted know if he's going to be the one. If I'm the one, print, I'm the one printing. I'm the, okay. I'm the one going to be printing. Okay. Uh, so whoever prints, they need to know where to go. And so it's going to be about one more inch down further than my last mark. And I've marked fronts, backs, and so on. But um, this will put us down right about where we need to be at. Again, I always do a, I'd always do a sample shirt just to check and make sure my math's correct and I haven't went in the wrong direction. So let's see here. Well, it just about will go like that. That's one nice thing about printing on poly. Now let's go ahead and flash that, and I'll put another one on, and then we'll, I'll measure it again, and then we'll know where to go from there. Make sure that we're right. To me, that looks a little far down. All right. So there you can see the final print, what it's going to look like. And I am a little further down than I. Okay. All right, and let's see. So I'm a little bit further down. So I'm actually going to drop for my production. I'm going to drop down another uh, where that line is. Just double. We go another inch. Should be fine to the top of the collar, and we should be fine. So. Now everybody who's pulling a squeegee knows where we need to be at. We're ready for the run of production on it. Let's see what Woody, Mr. Woody's got going on. Uh, we're doing uh, some youth shirts now. Uh, normally with larger shirts, I like to stretch it around there. Uh, it just makes things easier. It gives you a... Uh, more solid uh what's the word i guess uh platform to print yeah, on yeah, yeah but when you but, get this small you can't stretch them over can you yeah if you stretch those over that's gonna give you some serious issues It'll, once you uh unstretch it it's just gonna shrink up that it print. distorts it up so yep and then also i'm doing my best to keep anything that's raised like this collar i mean obviously with this is a uh, youth i think either medium or small you're not gonna be able to keep all those little uh uh, I guess they would be textures uh, off of the uh, platform that you're trying to print on. So I just do my best. The collar is going to be one of the thicker ones, so I make sure that one's not on there. And there we go. Got a nice shirt for HK right there. Excellent. Excellent. Looks good, Woody. All right. Let's see if you guys have any questions. I'll put you back on Jared so you get to see him. Dave, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you on here. Above Basic Embroidery, appreciate you guys watching. Let us, please let us know if you have any questions. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up. The, uh, Now, 
I'm going to grab a transfer right quick. I'm going to show you guys how we do our, uh, well, let me, I'll pull fresh screen off and we'll actually make this a production transfer. So hang on just one second. I'm going to get set up right here. Now it's kind of messy. Let me uh, move you over here. Hate you seeing our mess, but here's our transfer box. Now let that get into focus. All right, let me turn you down here a little bit. So, minus my Mountain Dew bottle. This is our little box for our pixie dust. And what we'll do is. Once we've printed our transfer, we're going to have to put the, the glue, the powdered glue, on the back side of it. Uh, that's what the glue that allows it to transfer. And we're going to sprinkle it onto the paper, move it all over it, kick the excess dust off, and then we're going to put it in the dryer. Now here's the key. We're curing with our direct print at about 330, 340 degrees. With our transfers, we don't want to cure them. We want to soft cure them or gel cure them. And gel curing them is going to be at uh, above 200 degrees. Uh, we're doing it at about 240, 250. So let me uh, get get set up over here, and I'll let y'all watch Ted for just a second while I'm getting set up. The, uh, the transfer powder that we're using, uh, somebody just mentioned it, me, I should have said. We are using uh, Union Ink uh, Unilon transfer powder. The uh, sheets are 12 and a half by 12 and a half uh, transfer sheets. Uh, I don't know what brand name they are, I just know they work good. Uh, we sell them. Ted, how much are they? Uh, $125 for $1,000 for a thousand sheets. So 12, 12 and a half cents. No? That's correct. Yeah, 12 and a half cents a sheet. Mm -hmm. so a lot of people say, well, why don't you just go ahead and direct print? Well, here's the thing. Could you imagine me trying to tape that out for all those names? It's very difficult to do. It's a lot easier for me just to, uh, to do a transfer and be able to place each transfer on there. transfer paper and I'll be right back. Now you'll notice on our platens, when we're tape out for a regular print job, we're putting a big piece of double-sided uh, uh, tape down. And that helps grab the shirt, especially when you're flashing to keep it from releasing and pulling up. Uh, you don't want the shirt to move while you're doing direct printing. Well, you don't want transfer paper to move either. But if you use the full size of uh, paper, then when you go to peel up your... Uh, Paper, it's going to roll up like a cigar, and you can't. You don't want that. That's no good. 
So what you do is you put down small strips of sticky tape. That way, two, two things happen. One, the tape is not in the way of your image area that you're trying to print. And number two is when you go to peel it up, there's no tension against it, so therefore it peels easily off of the, uh, off the platens. So we'll get you set up right here so you guys can see what I'm going to be doing. set my transfer paper down and then smooth it out now if you're doing a multiple color transfer you always want to run the transfer sheets through the uh, through the dryer first uh, you'll get a little bit of shrinkage with them and it's enough to distort it where you might have a bit of difficulty doing registration so image in and I'm going to drop my off contact just a little bit got it kind of high and Put me in off contact at the top. All right, so now we've got me a good surface to print on. Grab me a squeegee. Some of this yummy. Now, we put this ink onto the corner of the dryer. It was really thick because it was about 72 degrees when we got started. Now, you can see what consistency we have now. Your inks will print much better when they're up to operating temperature. Uh, we were talking about this in the office yesterday, and I think one of the manufacturers said 80 degrees. And I think that's a, that's a good number. I wouldn't be afraid to be printing most inks at about 85, most plastisols. But I wouldn't want to go a whole lot hotter than that. Let me go check and see if you guys got any comments. So let me see if I can get this set really good for you guys, really close here. I'll move it over in just a second. So I want to see. So choose a, a squeegee, the width of the job you need. Don't choose one extra long. If you got a four inch heart patch, you don't need a 14 inch squeegee. Choose you one that gives you a little gap. If you're a really good screen printer and you've got a good consistent stroke, you don't need one that's more than a half an inch wider, quarter of an inch wider than the image area. Uh, starting out, maybe give yourself an inch on each side. Now, I'm, push, I'm printing off contact, so I'm away, see, about 3 sixteenths away. So my first part of my stroke is to go down to the what I'm printing on. In this case, it's transfer paper, but normally it'd be a garment. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of an angle, and then I'm gonna pull my squeegee, okay? And then I'm gonna come back again, because if you'll see, I did not clear out my image area right up there in the G. And so I need to clear that out, because if I was to go right now, 
this is going to look horrible. Now with transfers, another thing, tilt your squeegee. Don't let ink get fall back through the screen because what will happen is if you let ink fall back through the screen, it can weep through and then it'll leave little dots on the, on the top of your image area. So... So there's my transfer. Now, I'll take my transfer paper. Oh, about made a bad. And I'm gonna carry it over here. And we jokingly call this bread and chicken. Always keep the lid on your transfer paper closed. You want it to stay dry. You don't want it to get moist. If it does, it's not as effective. So I'm gonna sprinkle me some out there. I'm just gonna make sure that it's all covered without making too big of a mess. And you want to flick the excess off. And here's the reason you want to do that. Because if you don't flick the excess off, then that glue, especially on dark garments, will show up when, uh, when you go to press it. And I always forget to flick wherever my finger was because that is always going to leave a fingerprint of dust right there. Now, I'm just going to run it through the dryer. Now, here's the thing. Ted's got the dryer going at 340 degrees. Um, I don't want it 340. So I could put it under the flash cure and cure it right quick. But also, what I'll do is I can throw it through the dryer. Here's Ted wearing one of our prints. Nice. Looking good. Looking good. And so what I'll do is I'm going to throw it into the dryer about halfway. And then I'll pull it on out. Now, I know that's a little bit of guesswork, but the key is I just don't want it to cure to the paper. All I need it is over 200 degrees, and I don't need it 320 degrees. So there's our last sheet, and I'm going to print another one right quick. Because we got Woody the Rookie doing this, and no tells if he's going to screw one up or not, so... We want to have an extra just in case. This is some sticky ink to be making transfers with, I'll tell you that. Same process back to breading. Thank you, Woody. Gotcha. Now the reason we do it in this little box here is you don't just get rid of your transfer powder when you're done. It's still good to use for later so all you have to do is take it out of this box and put it back into the uh, and put it back into the tub and again just put the lid back onto it now I'm going to flick it off and then run it through the dryer again. And there we go.
go. And then, all right, I'll take over now. So I'm just gonna cut out these where uh, all my names are. And one thing I like to try to do, this kind of makes uh, lining it up a little bit easier, is when I'm cutting it out, I'll do my best to make sure that we have whatever blank space there is on this side. I'm gonna try to match that blank space on this side. It just visually makes it a little bit easier to uh, complete those transfers and make sure they're centered there. So now check about that much. Yeah, about the same on this side. So as you can see there, I'm not sure if y'all can quite see that but we've got about the same amount of white space on either side just to help me with lining those up doesn't have to be exact but uh it's uh, not too difficult And I mean, you can uh, cut down the outsides if you want. Uh, I don't really mind them being super long, but uh, as you can see there, I didn't quite get that right. So I'm just gonna give it a quick snip there. And now you can see those are uh, approximately the same outside length that you got there. Here to cut straight wood. And then, so once I've got these all uh, cut out and ready to go, I'm just going to wait for my shirts to get over here and be ready to print, and then we'll be good to go for these transfers. All right, so while Woody's, uh, Woody's finishing up with that, uh, we want to open it up a little more to you guys. Uh, if you got any questions, please, please feel free to ask. Jared, you need to be keeping an eye on the road and not keeping an eye on the I was Facebook the Live. Same I know, thing, you I know. know. I know. Unless you got a heads up display that's got the live video out there. Um, any questions about the tra the transfers that we've done, or how we're pressing them, or uh, our direct print, or how we make our screens? Be happy to answer them. Because uh, uh, I know we've been having fun. It feels like we've been down here 15 minutes and just look at the clock, and we've been going for 50 minutes. So. Dang, yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought we'd been down here a lot less than that. I'm trying to think if there's anything that we missed. So we've talked about the, the direct print, how we registered it up onto the platen, uh, how we measured our distance down onto the shirt. Now, one thing that's interesting is, so we printed the backs, the logo on the back first, and then putting the name. So we had to make sure to leave enough distance. And, this is why I'm saying you need to do a test shirt because 
our first one that, that we did and we printed the logo and we put the name across it, it was it looked good, but it looked way too high. So we had to drop that down a little bit more. And so you need to do that on a test shirt before you do it on a production shirt uh, because we're trying to drop the name between the collar and the image that we had. So we, uh, and, and I always put one on. We had, that shirt was the perfect size for Ted. So once we got done with that, that sample shirt, we we got Ted to put it on. We want to make sure, take a look. Is the image straight on it? Is it is it squared? Is it you know how how is it? And how does it drop off of the body? How does it look on on the human body? Uh, I know sometimes I've actually taken pieces of tape, the same size as my image, and stuck them to a shirt, put them on somebody in the shop just to see how does it fall, how does it look? Because there's no hard and fast rule about this stuff. Uh, most crests are going to be three and a half down and three and a half over for the center of the top. But it just depends on who's getting the shirts and, and, and how the image is made and how the image looks. If it's, a, if it's a wider image than it is tall, then there's going to probably be an adjustment for that location. I'll, trust your eye when you're doing this. Trust your eye to make the right judgment for you. There's no hard and fast rules to do it every single time. Uh, we went over Woody's. Yep, Jer Jared brings up mirror transfer artwork, right? He's absolutely correct. When you're doing a transfer, you gotta always remember to mirror image the uh, mirror image the artwork, because uh, if you don't, then it's gonna be backwards. You saw right there. I just showed you. It's uh, the word. It looks like it's backwards. If you were to put it in mirror, it'd look forwards. It's the same thing as when you pull down that uh, that uh, key press. It's uh, reversing that image. So, yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So, um, putting it correctly onto the uh, heat press, there are some people who, who want you to have a T-square there. Um, your print, if your print has a line to it and it's already registered, you can use your print as your guide as well. Hopefully the screen printer threw it on the right way and, and, and it's squared, it's plumb. And then, uh, so that's for your transfers. I think that's a... That's about it. We're getting ready to wrap up here. So if you guys have some questions, we're, we're going to be around for just a few more minutes, and then we're going, we're going to come off of live. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. And if you think of any after we're done here, definitely uh, just write them in the comments. We'll respond when we uh, can get a to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll uh, yeah, write them in the comments if you think of something later, and uh, we'll be happy to get with you on those. And right now, all I'm doing is uh, Jay printed two of these screen or two of these uh, transfer sheets for me. So I'm really just comparing and contrasting and deciding which one I think is uh, has the better print, which one I want to use. And they're both really good prints, so he's made it pretty easy on me. Most of them look pretty much exactly the same, but every now and then some ink globs up somewhere, you get a little something, something, and. Uh, it doesn't have much with Jay, more with Jared. <laughs> the uh, people ask, so, well, if you only needed one set of letters, why would I do two transfers? Well, the reason I do two transfers is this transfer sheets are only 12 and a half cents. The amount of ink I've used on there, probably about eight cents worth of ink. So I've got 20 cents invested in that transfer, not including my screen now. 20 cents invest in it. I've already paid for the screen. I can go ahead and print two or three of these in case I miss some imperfection or something. It's a whole lot easier for me just to go ahead and print a few, an extra, at least an extra one, if not an extra two. Um, now, because what happens if I go ahead and break that screen down? Well, if I break that screen down and I look at my transfer and I've only printed one, I, I got to burn another screen at that point. So it don't make sense. It, it's only extra 20 cents. I'm just going to go ahead and print two or three of them. That way I've got an extra one in case I need it. Good question, Ms. Farmer. How long will screen print transfers last for? These plastisol prints that we have, um, this plastisol ink, they will last quite some time. 
Now, how long is going to depend on where you store them at. Uh, if you keep them in a relatively cool environment, humidity free, not too dry, not too humid, uh, they should last a couple years on your shelf uh, before you use them because Plastisol ink will never completely cure until it hits, in this case, about 320 degrees with this ink. Um, so it, it should remain static. But over a period of time, the paper will degrade and so will the Plastisol itself. So I've heard uh, one of our friends who owns a, screw, a transfer company, he said he's had transfers that are five plus years old on the shelf that still work. Uh, I wouldn't want to push it that far, but I know you can get, if you print some now, they should be good at least until next year, if not the year after that. Great question, thank you. Well, I think we're getting ready to, I think we're getting ready to wrap it up. Now, let me take a look. Yep. We're getting ready to wrap it up. We uh, we appreciate you guys uh, dropping by to watch us. We, we really appreciate it a lot. We, we don't come down here just for ourselves. We come down to, to, to uh, throw some uh, examples out there to let you see what our technology does and also show you how to use the technology. And in this case today, how to use it in a real production type of print. Um, the uh, equipment that we have, we sell a wide range. We, we've got our exposure units, which is what we're mainly uh, known for, uh, motion free water-free, chemical-free. Also, uh, we sell a line of presses, dryers, flash cures as well. We sell a lot of BBC, Black Body Corporation, and, uh, and Antec presses. And Antec's a, a very good quality press. We've been partners with them for, and BBC for a number of years. Um, we sell full business packages and also with any new business package that we have we give free training we're not just dumping equipment off to you we want you to be successful in your printing and so with any new business package comes the expertise of the crew that we have here Jared and Ted and me and Woody uh, happy to help you out any any way that we can and if you have any questions we'll we'll give you an answer if we don't have an answer we'll try and find an answer for you so uh, Appreciate you guys dropping by. Uh, thank you for your time. If you have any questions, you can give us a call. Uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. Uh, keep in mind our special this week, uh, or for the rest of this month, is you buy a hand sanitizer or a, a mask and get 10% off of your order. We're selling both of those now. So appreciate it. Thank you so much for dropping by to see us and take care.